The government have said that schools should not teach contested views about white privilege as fact. The Department for Education is now planning to develop new guidance to help schools meet their duties while teaching about complex political issues. The government has published its response to a report from the Education Select Committee which claimed that terminology such as white privilege may have contributed towards a systemic neglect of white working class pupils. Wow. This was a really big report from the Education Select Committee that really highlighted some of the disadvantages faced by white working class boys, in particular in the education sector. And I think it showed a real kind of pivotal moment in, in trying to recognise that and put it at the forefront of policy making. Yeah, I'm often, you know, criticised and, and a lot of people, you know, write in an email to me and say, I'm, you know, I'm too critical of the government. I'm too critical of Boris Johnson. Well, can I tell you, uh, in what they've said, in what Nadim Zahawi, of course, mm-hmm. who has now taken this position, um, I'm not sure the vaccines minister that's replaced him is necessarily quite as good as he was, but on this subject, for Nadim Zahawi to have made it as clear as mm-hmm. this, uh, I think this is quite a big moment. Mm-hmm. Now, it needs to be taken through to delivery and not just be words, yeah. but, I mean, absolutely, 100% uh, support from me to Nadim Zahawi for what he said, uh, these concepts such as white privilege that are being taught in quite substantial parts of America now mm. and was increasingly being taught here. It's all about making us hate ourselves, particularly white people. Got to hate themselves, hate their country, hate their history. And it's all part of this modern day Marxist agenda, which isn't, and it isn't to bring us together, mm. it's to divide us. So well done, Zahawi, for saying what he said. I, I mean, I, I tend to agree. It is entirely divisive, this theory of white privilege. Mm. It's entirely unhelpful, not least, actually, because it takes no account of socioeconomic <coughs> status. Mm-hmm. It takes no account of, of issues around class and, and background, etc. Um, you know, the, the idea that a young white working class kid in Wigan, for example, who probably suffers huge barriers in terms of the, the way of developing his or her opportunity, and you compare, you know, that person's background and that person's opportunities, life opportunities, to, to the Asian son or daughter of middle class parents in, mm. in London who's going to university. Yeah. Um, why do we get so hung up on, on trying to tell the, the white kid in that case you're actually benefiting from, from some sort of privilege when he probably doesn't feel he's benefiting in any way at all? So, you know, I, I, I tend to agree that if, we, if we're about bringing people together, and breaking down barriers um, and trying to, to be colourblind almost on the issue of race, which I have to say I think we, we should be, um, we seem to be doing it entirely the wrong way. By it was well, certain people in society, some of them in public life, I have to say, seem to be doing it in entirely the wrong way by obsessing about colour in a way that's dividing and fragmenting society. So, so I think the government, to be fair, is doing the right thing on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Arlene, this was uh, this was sort of some very very clear guidance, wasn't it, coming this week? And I know, I mean, the number of people that email me really concerned about what their children are being taught in school, about British history and all the rest of it. Uh, This is quite a decisive intervention, isn't it? No, and a very welcome one, I think, as well, because if uh, people feel that they're from a privileged uh, minority, well, why am I having such a hard time? How is it that I don't feel any of that privilege? So I think it's absolutely the case that that should be tackled. We had a, a particular problem and still have a particular problem with working class Protestant boys in Northern Ireland um, succeeding in the way that their peers do in the Catholic community. And for many years, uh, that was denied uh, by those from the nationalist community. Uh, I think it has now been recognised as a problem uh, because when you look at the statistics, they're very, very clear. Uh, And one of the interventions um, that has been really helpful uh, has been putting nurture units into some of those working class estates and having those early interventions to help Uh, with what Paul has referred to as socioeconomic issues, uh, maybe some family breakdown issues, and I think it has really showed a difference. So there are ways to deal with some of these issues, but the first thing you have to do is to recognise the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, well, I think we're in agreement. Well done. Well done, Nadeem Zahawi. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and, and he... He's never short of something to say, is he? He's, he's a very made a lot of money, of course, as a businessman with YouGov, so very successful guy. Um, however, 
The new vaccines minister, tell us all about her, please. About Maggie. Maggie Throop um, has just taken on the position as vaccines minister. Still new to the role, and I think it must be difficult to go into your first ministerial role and, and try to get to grips with something so huge as a vaccination programme. But she's made a few statements in Parliament so far. And we're here, we're going to see her a little bit more on media, because, of course, Nadim Zaharoui was all over the media yep. when he got appointed. Yep. So we're hoping to see more from Maggie. But I do wish her well in what's a, still a difficult job, certainly with this booster vaccination she's, program. She's yet to do any media interviews um, and given that one of the government's priorities is to... So I was too nice about the government for too long there, wasn't I? <laughs> He's going to flip it back. <laughs> I can see you They're getting restless. It hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.